Art with Miss Strauss, first grade art for October 19th through October 30th. Are you ready for lesson five? Light and shadow with everyday objects? Last week, we talked about everyday objects. This week, we are going to talk a little more about those objects and still life drawings, but we are also going to include light and shadow, the science of light and color, plus some fall festivals and traditions like Halloween. And it's okay if you don't do these things at your house, but it's important to know about other cultures and people. And I promise this won't get too spooky. We'll also talk about the Mexican Day of the Dead Festival. These holidays happen around the same time of year, but they're definitely not the same thing. Before we get too far, let's talk about setting up your art space. Find a comfortable spot for you and your art materials. Really, the only thing you'll need right now is your school laptop or iPad. In this lesson, I will be using the optional materials. I will be using writing utensils, like a regular pencil, art supplies like colored pencils, crayons, and markers, plain white paper, and possibly some digital drawing tools. Now, this lesson is in two parts. This part is going to be on the computer, but the next time you have art class, you should be in the classroom. Words to know. The first word is light. Primary colors. Secondary colors and festival. We will start with light. Light makes vision possible. Without light, we could not see. White light is made up of all the colors and black shadows are where there's no light and we cannot see any color. When light bounces off of an object and your brain reads the light message, it tells you what colors you see. Light shines down on an object and then the color light bounces into your eye. Your eye sends a message to your brain to tell you to see those colors. Color is something your eyes see when the light reflects off of the surface. You see color every day. Look around you. How many different colors do you see? Do you remember when we talked about color in our lesson about the elements of art? It's okay if you didn't, but we did say something about primary colors in that lesson. We said that there were primary colors and there are only three of them. Blue, red, and yellow are our three primary colors. When you mix two primary colors together, you get secondary colors. Artists have been using colors for many centuries to create artwork. An artist needs to understand how to mix color and what will happen when they put certain colors together. When you mix the primary colors, yellow and blue, you get green. When you mix the primary colors, blue and red, you get purple. When you mix the primary colors, yellow and red, you get the secondary color, orange. But what if instead of mixing paint, we mix other things? What if we started mixing Play-Doh? Let's find out. Red, blue, and yellow are called primary colors. When you mix primary colors, you can make purple, green, and orange. Let's mix some colors. Red and blue. What color did we make? Purple. Red and yellow. What color did we make? Orange. Blue and yellow. What color did we make? Green. Purple, orange, and green are called secondary colors. What else can you use to mix colors? What's your favorite color? The next word is festival. Have you ever heard someone say the word festival? What do you think that word means? A festival is a day or period of celebration that is often part of a tradition. Not everyone celebrates festivals or holidays, and some people celebrate the same type of holiday or festival in different kinds of ways. 
It's okay to talk about festivals or holidays that we don't participate in, as long as we are being respectful of the other people who do. Now, I don't think that I would call Halloween a festival, but it is a celebration that happens this time of year. This picture shows some Halloween decorations. What do you notice about the colors? Do you notice any secondary colors? I notice orange, purple, and green. These colors are often used together with black as decorations for this holiday. Halloween is one of the oldest holidays and it is celebrated all around the world. A long time ago in Europe, Halloween costumes were worn as disguises to trick wandering spirits and fairies. Back then, they also believed that jack-o'-lanterns kept the spirits and fairies out of their houses. Halloween falls on October 31st. That's the end of the month. People tell spooky stories, decorate their houses, carve jack-o'-lanterns, get dressed up for trick-or-treating, and eat lots and lots of candy. Mmm, candy. While Halloween and the Day of the Dead may share some similarities, they are definitely not the same thing. What is the Day of the Dead? Hmm, let's find out more. Today, I'm celebrating Dia de los Muertos. That's Spanish for the Day of the Dead. It is a Mexican holiday where people remember family members and friends who have died. It is celebrated on November 1st and 2nd. Even though you might see a lot of skulls and skeletons, Dia de los Muertos is not meant to be scary. It is a happy celebration. During Dia de los Muertos, families build and decorate beautiful altars called ofrendas. Decorations include pictures of loved ones, water, flowers, foods, and candles. Sugar skulls are made and decorated during the holiday. The sugar skulls can also be eaten. Yum! These people are making papel picados. They're decorations made out of paper and cut into designs. Look at the dancers. They have their faces painted like skeletons. Listen to the happy music. The dancers are wearing colorful dresses. At the end of the festival, there is a candlelit parade to the cemetery to visit the altars. Wow, the altars look different at night with all the candles. It is nice to remember our friends and family even when they are no longer with us. Do you celebrate any holidays? Which holidays do you spend with friends and family? Did you notice all of the colors that were used to decorate? Did you see any primary colors? How about secondary colors? Let's look at some more images from this festival. I see lots of orange and some purple and some green. Those are secondary colors, excuse me. There's also some blue and yellow. Blue and yellow are primary colors. And look, there's some red. The sugar skulls used in this festival are very colorful. What colors do you see? I see orange, green, blue, red, purple. There are so many flowers in this decoration. I wonder where they found so many orange, purple, and red flowers. It looks like there are some black beans and seeds in this decoration. Did you notice all of those orange flowers? They're in so many of the decorations for the Day of the Dead. These flowers are called marigolds. Marigolds can be orange and yellow or a combination of both. I have some 
marigolds growing by my house. Do you have any marigolds growing by where you live? Or maybe you've seen them growing in other places. Many people from Mexico speak a different language called Spanish. Since we are talking about the Mexican holiday, the Day of the Dead, I thought that we should also see if Senora Alicia could talk to us about different colors in Spanish. Are you ready? Hola, vamos a cantar. Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? Mira, escucha y entenderás. Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? Bienvenidos a Arte y Más. Hola, Susana. Hola, señora Alicia. Hola, niños y niñas. Hola means hello. Mira, escucha y contesta. Tengo pinturas. Son tres colores, ¿verdad? The Rojo, three primary colors, red, amarillo, yellow, y azul. Blue. Son los tres colores primarios. Colores three primary primarios. Colors. Voy a mezclar amarillo, yellow, amarillo, con rojo, red, y ahora tengo el color, new color, sí, anaranjado, muy bien, el It's color a... anaranjado, orange, ahora voy a mezclar amarillo, yellow, el color amarillo, yellow, con el color azul, the color blue, Y tengo entonces el color verde. Muy bien, el color verde. Very good, bien. the color green. Ahora voy a mezclar el color azul y el color rojo. The red. ¿Verdad? Un poquito de rojo. Y un poquito de azul. And the color blue. Y voy a tener otro color. Y este color es el color morado. The color purple. El color morado. Purple. El color morado. The color Bien. purple. Good. Entonces tenemos colores primarios. The primary el colors. El color rojo. Red. El color amarillo. Yellow. Y el color azul. Blue. Y los colores secundarios. Secondary morado, colors. Morado. Purple. Anaranjado. Orange. Verde. Green. Muy bien. Very good. Ahora vamos a mirar. Mira. In this part of the lesson, I'm going to show you how I drew my pumpkin with dark and light and mostly using my secondary colors of orange, purple, and green. I'm just using basic drawing supplies and office supplies like white printer paper, a few crayons, and a pencil. Our lesson today was about light and shadow and we talked about everyday objects and drawing everyday objects. Right now we have some natural light and I wanted to show you a couple of different things. The first thing when I change the light, notice how the shadows change. Ready? Hey Google, turn the lights on. Do you see how the light and shadow changed on these objects? I have another light over here. Let's see if we can change it again. Part of setting up a still life is getting the light just right. Now that's pretty bright, but I don't really like it. Now we have this nice light and shadow on these objects. You may recognize from our video before the marigolds from the Day of the Dead celebration. We have yellow and orange. And also these right here, they're not pumpkins. These are gourds. This is a gourd. This is a gourd. This is a gourd. Maybe you've eaten one of these before. This is called a skin spaghetti squash. This is a butternut squash. 
These are all examples of gourds. I'm gonna try and set up my still life right like that so you guys can see. And we're gonna look for the shadows and the light, how it hits. you are drawing, you should use light pressure so that if you need to go back and erase, it's easier. Or if you cover it up with a crayon, you won't see it as much. Our paper can be in landscape mode for this drawing. That means that it is long on the top and short on the sides. We're going to make some big pumpkins. If I draw a teeny tiny little pumpkin, it it won't work. I'm going to use my hand as a guide. I'm going to put it right in the middle of the page and I'm going to start with a dot on one side and then I'm going to do a dot on the other. Now I'm not going to push very hard at all because I don't want to see this. That's how big my pumpkin is going to be. That's a halfway point. We're going to take different lines to connect from here to here. We're going to make a curved line. Ready? It's going to make almost like a C shape or a backward C around this way on one side of this line. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other. We're going to do that again, but this time we're going to go out a little bit further on each side because we need, need to make our pumpkins fat. We like some chubby chubby pumpkins. Ready? Every time I add a line on either side, it makes my pumpkin wider and wider. pumpkin needs a pumpkin stem. We're going to do a line up, a line over, and a line back down. You can continue to add more layers to, you, to your pumpkin. I'm going to stop right there. I need to add the next part to my pumpkin. I'm going to add my, my horizon line is going to be a line that goes all the way across, but not over top of my pumpkin. I'm going to have my horizon line so that I can tell the difference between the background and the foreground. So my horizon line is simply a line that goes all the way across from one side to the other. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight and it doesn't go over top of my pumpkin. It goes behind. I'm going to start here and I'm going to go across and stop. Let me pick my pencil up and go over to the other side about here and continue that line all the way across right to the very edge. I have a table or the earth that my pumpkin is sitting on and maybe the sky or the background here. I want you to notice something about the light. On my pumpkin, I have a light side where the light is shining and a dark side where there's more shadow. I have a lamp right here, that red lamp. I'm going to turn it on. Watch what happens to the pumpkins. It gets very bright on one side and very dark on the other. The light is on this side and the shadow, the dark, is on this side. I'm going to choose a dark color and say that it's going to be on this side and a light color, like a bright yellow, like a sunny yellow, is going to be on this side. So now I have my shadow and my light. My light is here, and so it's gonna shine and it's gonna hit this edge of this pumpkin. Ready?
remember that line that we drew up the middle? I'm going to stop because I need to stay on this side of my pumpkin and on the opposite is my shadow. Ready? I'm going to stay on this side and follow that contour. I have light and shadow here, but I also need light and shadow here on my pumpkin stem. I'll line up and stop. That stays on this side. And then a line up and stop on this side. I have light and shadow here, light and shadow here. I have one more spot to put my shadow, my pumpkin, my real pumpkin. It's by this light. The light hits on this side and the light can't go through the pumpkin. That means on this side, there's less light, there's shadow. Now it's not completely black because there's other lights in the room and the windows are here. But on this side is the contrast with bright white, light, and then shadow here. On my shadow side, I'm going to draw the shadow of my pumpkin. I have shadow and light for my pumpkin colors. I'm going to continue coloring this in with my green, purple, and orange crayons. I hope this demo helps you draw pumpkins. That's the end of the lesson for today. Remember to keep filling in those colors and use light and shadow. Thanks for practicing art with me. Goodbye.